This is part one of what if Deku was the son of Hades. Now to the start of the story, as a nine year old Deku was with his pregnant mother, older brother, and little sister. They were all walking together while looking at ice cream cones. All my and all the women were battling, causing massive measures of destruction to the surrounding buildings and infrastructure. As Deku's family started to run, but chunks of rubble from All Might's fight started to come towards them at increasing speeds. As Hades protected the shadow knights and emerged from the shadows and started to destroy the giant pieces of rubble. As Hades knights then instructed Deku's family to push forward, as they tried to get more cover, more and more rubble started to come in their directions. As the knights desperately tried to defend them, one by one they were destroyed. As the last one was destroyed, they were all immediately sent back to Hades. As he said, My lord, your family is in danger. As Hades looked up and saw his family, desperately trying to escape from being crushed, and Deku's older brother desperately trying to use the limited power he possessed to block the large pieces of rubble, as he then jumped up and was moving through the levels of the earth at incredibly high speeds. As all for one then threw all might, approximately a mile, as the wind pressure then caused Deku's mother and siblings to be blown forward, as they were then thrown. As Deku's mother then landed on her stomach, killing her unborn child, injuring her. As Deku's older brother struggled to get up and then tried to pick up his mother as he tried to continue moving forward. As his little sister was slightly behind as she struggled to get up as well. As All Might and All for One started gearing up for their ultimate moves. As All Might and All for One soared to each other as Deku's brother then looked at Deku and said, Sis is too far and mom's too injured. I can't save both of you so live your life for us. As he smiled and dragged Deku into the ground. As he started getting pulled into the ground, he screamed, No, no, stop! Don't leave me! As Deku's brother, while bleeding out of his eyes, All Might said, United States of Smash! As All for One was then launched into the ground, creating giant shockwaves and craters. As the last sight Deku saw before his brother closed the ground and moved him was All for One smashing into his mother and brother. As his sister was then killed in the shockwaves, as Deku on the ground was screaming, hitting the wall of the earth that was surrounding him. As Hades then came to Deku and held him as he cried in his arms. As Hades then brought them both up to the surface. As Deku and Hades looked at the dead bodies of his mother and siblings. As Deku then looked up to Hades and said, Father, can you revive them? As Hades shed a tear out of one eye while looking at them. As his eye then heated up, causing the tear to disappear. As he said, No, my child, I cannot. I cannot even give them a happy ending either. Their souls have been damaged. Usually they would be permitted to live in Elysium, a place for virtuous people, but their lives have been taken by a virtuous person and an evil person. Two people of clearly distinct nature. So even I, the ruler of the underworld, could not claim their souls. But th there has to be a way, there has to be. My child, there, there is a way, but only the fates will know if it can be done. By this time, it was night, as All Might, staggering up, saw a child Deku and Hades glaring at them with the mother and the children he killed. As he started to say, I, I, I didn't want this. I, I. As Deku and Hades disappeared into the shadows, none of the fates. As Hades teleported to the fates with shadows and said, What must be done to save our family? And is it possible to exact revenge? To exact revenge, you must save their souls. You must betray and kill All Might and All for One, you must and also and his budding evil disciple, Tomura Shigaraki. But disciple. first, you need to locate Tomura, Tomura Shigaraki. Shigaraki. But first, you need and to get him to Tomura adopt Shigaraki. you as his younger brother, so you and may get, get him closer to, to All for as One. Younger and brother, take his life. so you may get closer to All for One, while and also working life. to eliminate All Might. You while must also working to eliminate All Might. You must become the disciple you must betray of All them Might both and betray him. Time. You must That's betray them both at the same time. That is all you need to know. Be on your way. As Hades then teleported them to the underworld, they said, Son, the journey you will face shall be long and tumultuous, but I know it in my heart that you will be able to finish it. That you will be able to exact revenge on both of them. I won't be able to see you as much because you will be burdened by your journey. But once you master your shadows and domain, you will be able to enter and leave our domain as you please. As Hades then started to train Deku of his power sources and the stress that each aspect would give him and what he should show to the villain and heroes. As Hades later found the location of Alpha 1 and Tomura as they were near a school, Tomura would train and sometimes look at the school and observe the children. As Hades then enrolled Deku into a school under a new identity under similar circumstances. Deku being handsome attracted a lot of attention, but since he was moody, he often turned away the advances of other girls. 
and he would also seclude himself from others, making them angry and perceive him as arrogant. As I started to grow in animosity towards him, as I soon started to provoke him, as I chastised him for his villainous nature and abilities, as Shigaraki, observing their animosity, started to say, No matter where you live or who you are, society will always be against those they view as evil. Typical, as Deku started to say, Stop, I, I don't want to hurt you. Hurt us? What are you going to do, huh, villain? As more and more students started to try and beat Deku, as Deku started to cow and say, Stop! As they started to berate him about being lonely and worthless, as Deku's aura changed and it grew darker, as he then sent a blast, shocking everyone back. Zeku then bended his hands and closed them. As the ground started to shake, as the ground opened, as every building on the site was being pulled into the ground. As Zeku was yelling, Tomura, observing the power, said, Oh my god! Oh my god, this is amazing! As the kids were running, but the ground itself was swallowing it up. As all the buildings, including the schools in the area, simply fell into the earth as the only piece of earth left was a part that Deku stood on. As Deku then pretended to collapse, as all for one seeing this while observing Tomar, then went to Deku and brought him back to Tomar and said, If we raise him, our revenge shall only be faster, and I know it in my heart that he possesses hatred. As Hades, the actual cause of destruction, smiled and said, It has begun. As Deku awoke in his bed in front of Tomar and all for one, as all for one said, we have observed you for some time and done some research of you. The death of your parents, the cruelty of all might, the rash, aggressive, condescending nature of society that would demean and hurt those that they view as evil. Only because they are weak and they cannot understand true power. Having observed all of these things, will you join hands with us in changing this new society? Yes, yes I will. Four years later, as Shigaraki and Deku were sparring, as they both punched each other, smiled, and fell, as Shigaraki said, Brother, it's time. The day we finally start our revenge. Yes. Now, as all for sent for them, they got up and went to him. Now, today is the day of the revenge. We've learned all my schedule, so Deku, you need to gain his favor by being heroic, and slowly letting him gain sight of your demonic nature and then agree to be a spy, and when we fully gained his trust and shown that you're a redeemed person, we will betray them and unleash our full force upon them. Now the Sludge Villain. As Deku, learning the schedule of All Might, decided to meet him, as he imparted the soul of a convicted person into slime as he said, Try to kill me, and I will lessen your struggle in Tartarus. Really? As Deku then started to walk, the Sludge Villain then started to attack him, as it started to consume him as he tried to open the ground. As he tried to open up the ground, the sludge villain still remained on him. All Might, seeing this from a distance, started to observe him as Deku then used his shadows and split the sludge villain. As he then staggered and raised his hand, as he started to concentrate, as he started to form dark flames, as he struggled, the sludge villain, noticing that he was struggling to form flames, then came together and lunged at him, causing Deku to jump back, open up the ground, and shoot lava at the sludge villain, burning it. As Deku thought he had burned it alive, turned around and started walking, as he was exhausted trying to use the flames, and quickly opening and utilizing lava, as a small part of the sludge villain had remained, as it immediately grew back and lunged at Deku. As he was then being suffocated, as All Might had decided to step in and quickly punch the sludge villain off of Deku, as he then put it in a bottle. As Deku thanked him as All Might jumped away, Deku held on to him. As Deku was holding onto All Might, he secretly grabbed the bottle and threw it at a random person who just happened to be Bakugo. As All Might, after hearing Deku scream in the air, realized Deku was on him, landed and told him the nature of his injury. As Deku then told him of his aspiration to become a hero, as he said, The nature of your quirk is obviously impressive. You can manipulate the shadows, the earth, the metals in the earth, and with further training, even fire. I think that with much practice, you can be a hero. But you need to spend more time developing your individual abilities. Thank you for your advice. As All Might started to walk away, as he realized that he dropped the bottle. So he ran down the stairs of the building to find the bottle. As Deku simply looked at the soul he imparted in the slime, found it, then disappeared into the shadows. As Deku waited until All Might and all the other heroes were too afraid to approach the sludge villain. As Deku, acting exhausted, put water on his face to make it seem like he was sweating, ran through the heroes, used his shadows, and ripped Baku from the sludge. 
as he then created a wall of metal around the sled villain, as he then put the sled villain in a metal box, as he put it in the ground, opened the ground underneath the metal box and shot lava into the box. As the whole box was filled with lava, it burst out of the box and started spilling out as he then cooled it. As everyone started to clap for Deku, All Might, impressed with his heroism and ingenuity, started to like him. As Baku, now breathing, looked up at Deku and thought, Wait, wait a minute. As Deku said, Hey, Kachan. Kachan, wait, you're... As Baku passed out. As Deku was walking home, All Might came to him and said, Young man, I'm impressed. Using those abilities exhausted you and left you on the brink, but you still went and tried to save that young man. And in your second encounter with him, you were able to accurately use your power to end the villain in a contained way without harming any civilians, or completely ruining the environment. I think that you have what it takes to be the greatest hero. Thanks, I appreciate that sentiment, but I still have a long way to go. True, but with my power, you can easily attain that. Your, your power? Yes, young man. I have already explained to you the nature of my injury, but I have not explained the truth of my power. As All Might explained the origins of One for All and gave Deku a piece of hair to consume, as Deku consumed the power of One for All, the villains had given Deku a house to live in and, and an adoptive parent to take care of him, as Deku started to train with All Might. Since Deku was already capable of fighting, he displayed his combat ability with All Might progressively, and the more and more All Might and him sparred, the more he would unveil, leaving All Might to think that he was simply naturally adept. And since he had been told by All Might that one for all boosts the quirks of the users, he displayed more control and power over his abilities. His powers aren't quirks, but divine power. As Deku, being smart, started to grasp the fish in the microwave concept much faster than Deku in the anime, spreading one for all all over his body. And since Deku was already physically capable, I'd say he can use up to 30% of one for all. As All Might always noticed that Deku would have to leave home at certain times to meet up with the League of Villains. Not knowing what he was leaving for, he was suspicious, but simply put in the back of his head. As Deku outside of his house, lit a cigarette and smoked and said, Mom, brother, sisters, I shall now take the main step in reviving you and helping you. As Deku tried to smoke it, his lungs had already regenerated, making the taste and the feeling of the cigarette void. As he simply lit another one. As Deku, due to his divine body, is ineffected by the effects of drugs or alcohol, so after the few seconds of consumption, their effects have been dissipated. Not at the start of UA. As Deku was entering UA, he was confused by the giant A shape of the building, and lost sight of his feet and tripped. As he fell, Uraka touched him and put him upright as he said, Thanks. As she turned to him and said, You're welcome. As she looked at him and blushed, Deku is currently six foot, chiseled, and wearing the exact same funeral costume as the one in the thumbnail. As he simply said, see you around sometime, and walked away. As she stuttered and said, y y yeah, as she thought, oh my god, he's so hot. Now, as Deku took a seat to listen to President Mike's presentation, he spot a Baco and spawned. Oh, seems he's here, as he looked and saw him getting into an argument with the blue haired kid, and thought, huh, something's never changed. As the presentation ended, he then proceeded to the written exam. As Deku then used shadow vision, as he started peeking from the shadows of people's hands and paper, looking at the answers, as he simply wrote them down, as he realized that some of the people weren't looking at the papers, and had already turned them in. As he closed his eyes and opened the ground to him, as he saw the answers from the position of the ground, he could see through any and everything touching the ground but not through the sky or the sea. As Deku finished his test, he then proceeded to the practical examination. As the exam started, Deku raised his hands and massive amounts of tungsten bolts came from the ground and struck through all the robots. As he then closed his hands and the tungsten bolts then formed together and flattened the robots. As he opened up his hands and the ground beneath the flattened tungsten became lava, as the robot simply melted. Seeing this, the examiner simply said that the examination was over, as Deku proceeded to get perfect scores for both of the assessments. As Deku was walking home, he put a cig in his mouth and called Shigaraki. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, I know. I got perfect scores. I'm just walking home. As he said, wait, someone's following me. As he hanged up on Shigaraki. As he turned around and said, do you want something? As Baku said, so you're back. <sighs> Pure so. Why'd you wait until now to see me? That was simply a coincidence. I didn't expect for you to enter UA. You didn't even care enough to tell me you were gone,
You just disappeared. It wasn't without cause, as Deku took another hit of the cig. And now what? You're apparently going by the name Shino Tenshi? Or Death Angel? It's a fitting name, Kachan. Bastard. Why did you do that? Why did you leave? Why did you leave me? Did you know how hard it was? To have your best friend just disappear? And the police, the heroes, no one could do a thing. Why? Why? Because, Bakugo, I needed revenge. I needed power to make sure that those who destroy my family pay. To make those who would dare oppress me bow. As Deku started raiding a demonic aura, as Bakugo started to feel uneasy, as Deku's eyes started to turn red, as he took another hit of the sig and calmed down. But I'm back now, so see you around as he walked away. As Bakugo was uneasy and confused, and simply walked away. Now, as Eki received a letter in the mail of his acceptance to DUA, he simply watched it, then sent it to the League of Villains, as he then went to sleep. Now DUA. As Eki walked in class 1A, everyone stared at him, then immediately turned their gazes, as he simply sat down and put his feet on top of another desk, took out a cig, raised his finger, and lit a dark flame under it, lighting it. As he put it in his mouth and hit it, as he blew out smoke, Edie came rushing over to him and said, Look, just because you got the top scores, that doesn't mean you get to smoke in the classroom. You're bothering everyone, and you should be worried about your lungs. My lungs, huh? <laughs> I heal at an incredibly high rate, so this doesn't even affect me. Secondly, if they were being affected by it, they could just say so. He took a longer, deeper breath of the cigarette and blew it into Ida's face. As Ida swiped the cigarette from Deku's mouth, as he then smothered it, Deku said, You're courting death. As Eku raised one hand towards Ida, a demonic aura could be felt in everyone. As everyone just felt death, they felt pain, they felt fear, anguish. As he realized that he wasn't supposed to kill Ida as yet, he said, never mind, and put his hand down. As everyone in the classroom calmed down, as everyone including Azawa in his sleeping bag had their hearts beating at incredibly fast rates, as if they knew that he was incredibly dangerous. As Eku said, don't bother me while I sleep. As he simply put his hands on the back of his head, laid back, and went to sleep. As all the other students soon entered UA, as Zoraka saw Deku sleeping and went to him and sat next to him. As he felt another presence and got up as he said, Oh, it's you. She said, Yeah, I remember you from the test day, but you never gave me your name. Name? You can simply call me she. She? She what? She no Tenshi. She no Tenshi. Is that your real name? As he looked at Baku and said, God given, I'm afraid. As Aizawa said, Now that you're all here, we can start, as everyone stared at a weird man in a sleeping bag. As he got out of the bag and explained who he was and how he'd be testing them, as they were all surprised by his expulsion rule. As they started to retort, but, but, but you can't do that! As he said, I can do whatever the hell I want, and radiated bloodlust. As everyone except Deku simply shaked and felt slightly uneasy, but they weren't as affected by it because they had felt Deku's immense aura as they all went outside and proceeded to take the examinations. Deku having 38% of one for all easily passed all of the tests. As Bako, knowing Deku to be demonic and powerful, was surprised by his physical strength, but as he saw the dark bolts of lightning radiating off him, he was less surprised. As All Might watching him in secret smiled and thought, oh he'll be fine, as they were then on to the ball throw. As Eku got in a throwing position, as he then lit up the ball with a dark flame and threw it with 30% of one for all, as the ball bursted forward, as he said, FLAME BURST! As the flame burst and the ball was launched exponentially farther, as he then got a score of 4,000 meters. As Aizawa asks, is that the full extent of your power? No, it's still the extent to which I can control without hurting others. As Aizawa took his answer without any resistance. As Baku thought, Damn, he's extremely powerful. I have a lot of training to do. As the day ended, as Eku was walking home, as he saw a homeless mother with children, as she asked for money, he simply pulled gold out of the earth and threw it at them, and then said, Here, that should be enough. As they thanked him, as he walked to the store to get groceries. As he was purchasing premium cigarettes, the cashiers, seeing his height and muscles, didn't try to confirm if he was of age or not, because he was simply too serious. As Eku took out a cig, put one in his mouth, and lit it, and went home. On his way home, he encountered a villain. As the villain said, Give me everything you have. As Eku sighed and stared at the villain, as the villain's bones protruded out of its body, 
As the villain screamed in agony, Azeki simply raised his hands in front of the villain and said, My father shall enact your punishment. Have fun in Tartarus. As the ground opened and soul chains hanged unto the villain, as he screamed, No, no, please, I'll, I'll do anything. As he was dragged into Tartarus, Azeki simply lit another sig and walked home. Now to UA. As they're going to be doing the hero versus villain fight, the matchups are going to be the same as in the anime. As Deku and Araka started going towards Bako and Ida, Bako came rushing towards Deku as he said, I want to see just how much you've grown on your own. As Bako let off a barrage of explosions, Deku using the flames of Tartarus was invulnerable to heat, but he was still being affected by the blast collisions. As he used one for all, bursted Bako, kicked him into a wall, and then punched him in the gut, knocking him out. As he picked him up, as they were walking to Ida, as Ida simply ran at Deku, Deku simply wrapped him in chromium and punched him in the face and then touched the bomb, and the round was considered over. Azeku then put his hands on Bako, and having consumed and taken the souls of others, he'd use the souls of other people he had taken to heal Bako. As Bako woke up and said, Damn you! Damn you! Azeku put a sick in his mouth and said, So much for thanks, as he walked away. The next day, as it was a day off for Deku, he then went to his parents' grave, they said, Soon. Soon. As a woman with black and white hair appeared behind Deku, as he said, It's been a long time now, see, brother. Hey, Makari. Now tell me, what is the goddess of blessed death doing meeting me? As he turned around and faced her. We've been told that you need to consume and punish more heroes and villains. Are the souls of Shi Raki and All Might and Alpha One not enough? They are for the redemption of your parents, but you need more power. In this way, you'll be able to quickly absorb the souls and gain more power. Remember, we go stronger in places of death, in situations of animosity, in places of fear and destruction. When you were with the villains, you were stronger because you were constantly around that behavior. But now, living alone with heroes, you're still powerful, but not nearly as powerful as you were but a year ago. So start consuming souls. Is that all? Yes, little brother. Take care. As she vanished into the darkness. From that point on, Deku would go out and hunt both heroes and villains. As the news just said that there's been a sharp decrease in heroes because there have been less villains patrolling the street. But in actuality, they simply said that because Deku killed them both and made it look like they died fighting each other. As Deku had been growing stronger and more powerful after every day, All Might training Deku noticed a sharp increase in abilities, but simply chalked it up to him being incredibly talented. Seeing as how All Might was able to use 100% of his power, he wasn't as surprised because One For All stockpiles power over time and the previous user of One For All died at a young age. All Might had lived a longer life, so the power had grown strong over time, but Deku had an innate healing factor, so he had just talked it up to his unique physique and power. Now to USJ. As Deku had observed Class 1B going to USJ where nobody was around, he made himself invisible and infiltrated USJ as he went and observed it. As he thought about his classmates' abilities and where they would be placed and which place would be the worst for them, as he then took that information and then went into the shadows and appeared at the hideout of the League of Villains and gave Shigaraki the information and when they would be there and which place would be worse for them. Azeku then got a drink and left. Now to the USJ attack. As 13 was describing the USJ, portals started to appear as the villains started to pour out as the students started to get teleported to different areas. They then had to fight the villains they had been teleported with. Then, as Deku had been teleported to the Nomo as he was fighting with at least 50% of One For All and his quirk, he was doing real damage as his classmates, fighting their villains, started to cheer him on as he was the only one powerful enough to stop the Nomo. As Deku was fighting the Nomo without using his flames to permanently get rid of it, he started using lava of the ground to decrease its mobility as he was landing extremely powerful blows to it. As the Nomo was being affected, Shigaraki, after being instructed at this point, then blindsided him and started using his cake work, disintegrating his arms. As Anomu then went and kicked Deku into a wall at the side of USJ. Deku healed himself just enough to endure the pain, but not enough to be fully healed, to make it seem like he put his all into this fight. As All Might then came and saw the damage Deku did to Anomu and the state of Deku. As Anomu healed itself of its injuries, All Might sprang into action, fighting it. But like in the anime, he fought the Nomu, but the amount of time he could use the power was decreased. As Deku started to heal his arms and stagger, Shigaraki said, She, we're gonna deal with you for what you did. As Deku said, 
I'll be waiting. As Shigaraki disappeared and Deku passed out. As Deku woke in a hospital, as Deku at the time had fully healed himself. All Might said, Oh, you're awake. As Deku said, This is my fault. Your fault. I should have been strong enough to protect them. I've been training all this time, but it still hasn't been enough. As he said, Young man, you can already use 50% of our power. That in and of itself is already impressive. With more time and consistency, you'll be able to use 100% of the power. And from that point, your power will only go stronger and stronger every year. You went to great lengths to protect the students of UA. You already did an amazing job. Azeki silently put his head down as All Might then left the room. Azeki smirked and thought, <laughs> the dummy fell for it. Now over the few weeks, the students had been training for the sports festival. Azeki had simply been consuming the souls, as he had been hiding the true percentage of his power from All Might, with him saying 52% with him actually being at 60. As a main strategy of the League of Villains was to slowly diminish the power and time in which All Might could use all for one, they decided that would be good for them to attack the sports festival. Now to the sports festival. As Deku was asking Uraka for a reason for becoming a hero, she said, Money, as he thought. Of course, these heroes are all the same, as he said. For my family, they're really poor and struggling to make ends meet. As a child, I felt burdened watching them struggle and not being able to help them, but it's all good now, because I'm going to succeed, as he smiled and thought, your family, that's nice. How about you? As he said, you could say I'm doing this for my family. Oh, really? As Todoroki came in and said, could you leave the room? I want to talk to Deku alone. As he started to ask Deku if he was the secret child of All Might, seeing as how Deku had multiple quirks, but he also had a quirk that resembles All Might's, and he's always with All Might, as Deku simply laughed and said, <laughs> No, that's ridiculous. As he said, We are both similar in that we possess more than the average quirk user. But either way, whether you deny it or not, I shall defeat all my son. As Deku simply looked at him sideways, as Todoroki left the room with a serious face on. Now the examiner. As the examiner said go, the race started. As Deku simply used one for all and sprinted to the end of the finish line. As he was then awarded first place, as Bako and Todoroki caught up with him much later. Now to the team battle, as Uraka joined Deku's team and so did the other people that did originally. As Deku simply brought them to the ground, as they simply waited, Deku then brought them back up as the examiner said that the battle was over. As Deku and his team were declared the winners, now to the battles, Ama skipped to Deku vs Todoroki. As the announcer said go, Todoroki shot a huge wall of ice, to which Deku then shot up a larger wall of aluminum a metal that's more resistant to the cold, as he then slammed it against Todoroki's ice, as he then created another wall of aluminum behind Todoroki, and smushed them together. As Todoroki was basically put in a very small, tighter space, he then created more ice and propelled himself upwards, as he then started shooting ice pikes toward Deku, to which Deku easily avoided, as Todoroki, seeing as if this was ineffective force, decided to change the battleground. As the whole battlefield was frozen, as Deku opened up the ground and shot up lava, melting off the ice. As he then froze the lava forcefully and then proceeded to shoot upward power shots of air towards Todoroki, trying to test out one for all. As Todoroki was easily knocked off of his platform of ice as he fell, as Deku then blitzed where he was going to fall and kicked him with a powered one for all kick. As Todoroki went flying, he then created a barrier of metal as Todoroki crashed into the metal wall. Deku slowly walked towards him and said, So much for having two quirks. I will never use my father's power. I mean, it's your power. You have an ice power, and so do other people. It's not just inherent to them. I mean, you could literally develop a completely different power than your father, so... I don't know why you care so much, but whatever. I said to Ricky that, You're right! As he flared up and shot a power blast of flame towards Deku. As Deku being immune to heat simply walked toward him with a smile. Oh, look who's finally come around, but whatever. As Deku then powered his fist and then flicked towards him, shooting an air blast at his stomach, knocking him back against metal, being declared the winner. Now to Bako versus Deku. As the announcer said go, Deku simply summoned shadows and shot a wave of them towards Bako, as Bako let off a large scale explosion to combat his shadows. Deku simply smiled as Deku said, Let's kick this up a notch, as he powered up to 20% of one for all and shot a Detroit smash. To which Baku countered as he then said, 
25%. As he then shot another Detroit smash as Baco countered with his arms and started to shake. As Zeki said, I won't use my full strength, but this should be enough. As he then jumped in the air, coated himself with Tarvis flames, and then said, 20%. Detroit smash. Though the wind was weaker and the people in the crowd knew it was weaker, they could also see that it became stronger to the dark flames. As Bako strolled to combat his flames because, as the two forces clashed, Deku's attack soon consumed Bako's. As he was going through Bako's attack at an increasing speed, Deku then blitzed his attack and dissipated it. As he then looked at Bako, picked him up by the collar, and threw him out of the arena. As everyone in the crowd roared and shouted his name with praises, now as they were getting awarded, as All Might was putting the number one medal on Deku's neck, villains in the crowd started to attack the civilians, as Nomos then landed in the middle of the arena as people started screaming. And that's it for this what if. Hope you enjoyed. Sub. Don't be a b***h. Bye.